J Save the World, episode 1.11, The Exile. Hey, as long as he doesn't uh, get people to cause riots, I'm pretty sure we can just wait till this whole thing blows over, replies Jester. Well, I'm off to bed. I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, good night, replied Christine. The next day, the air was shrouded in fog and people everywhere around town gathered and welcomed the coming of the Mavord. What is this? Some kind of parade? Why now of all times? These are the questions asked between the four friends in their dorms. Raven looked out the window and saw masses of cars parked from the outside of their dorm to the highway as far as the eye could see. I can't believe this, exclaimed Raven. I'm going downstairs to ask the caretaker what's going on. At that moment, Ra Raven rushes downstairs to the dorm lobby to ask the caretaker um, what's going on. Excuse me, but what is supposed to be the going on outside? asks Raven uh, to the uh, dorm taker, caretaker. Haven't you heard? He replied. We're having the National Award Day Parade. What? You can't be serious, replied Raven as she heads back upstairs. She then phones Bruce and, call, and tells them what's been happening outside. Yeah, I see. That's what's been going on in the news today. The folks throwing out candy, moon pies, and stuff, replied Bruce. I think I'm going to skip going outside today and lay low for uh, here for now, said Justin in the background. When the parade was over that night, the three brothers were in Justin's room and they watched the news. Once again, Kali was on the news thanking and congratulating the masters for a job well done and great. In the middle of his speech, he stated that there were still many who did not appreciate nor accept my calling. And it's due to that very fact that these re rebels must be brought to justice, for they are considered heathens. Which is why tonight I shall reveal the identity of those insidious outlaws and rebellions, for their intentions are to disrupt and disturb my master plan. Various pictures of Jay's name members appear on screen with Nathaniel being the first one shown. There are uh, about good hundreds of pictures shown until the three brothers and their friends the uh, pictures were shown. Uh, Justin and his uh, brothers as well as their friends in the dorm all were horrified as people everywhere in the city are about to start a ride. Immediately after the news is over, they get a call from Ed panicking about what they're going to do because he explained that they can't stay here and that they should leave before they get them. Calm down, replied Justin. This whole thing will probably blow over in the morning. I'm pretty sure they already forgot about us just now. No, no, things don't just disappear like that, explained Ed. We need to find a place to hide uh, and get as far away from here as possible. Alright, then you tell us where we're supposed to go from uh, here on, replied Justin. Uh, I was thinking about phoning Nate to see if he'll find a place for us, uh, replied Ed. Why? Scared of an angry mob or something? Asked uh, Justin. Yes! Ed exclaims. Dude, you overreact way too much, uh, replied Justin. Just chill, lay low if you have to, and it'll all be over before you even know it. Well, you're probably right. Thanks, replied Ed. The next day they woke up, got dressed, and headed off to school. For the longest, all seemed well. Even both sides met up and decided to head to school together. When they arrived to the street of the school, there was already a mass of people waiting for the group. Bruce, Justin, and Aaron started running back and headed in the woods out of the blue, while the other four wondered what was going on and kept walking forward. When they got close to the school, a mass of people with pitchforks, torches, and shovels yelled, There they are! Get them! Immediately, the angry mob charged at, the, at them with full force. The four began to uh, run screaming and panicking back uh, the route they came. They didn't hide in a nearby alleyway until they were eventually discovered. At that moment, Christine used the house to help more them uh, to safety. Meanwhile, the brothers were in the woods hiding until it blows over as Ted calls them on the phone asking them, Where are you three? I've been calling you all for the longest. We're hiding deep in the woods, replied Aaron. These folks here are crazy. I know. It's not just you all, but all other places J State members are located. I myself am on the run, replied Nathaniel. Listen, where exactly are you? We're in the woods, not too far from um, off of the uh, Houston Lights Academy, replied Justin. Okay, good, replied Nathaniel. 
then that means you're not too far from the city near the abandoned Wilcox building. Uh, the rest of your teammates are waiting for you there. Listen, I will be arriving at the uh, building with the helicopter. I'll be ready to achieve your relatives to a secure location. Now the only people uh, left are you guys. Hey, how are we supposed to get to the building without getting caught out there? You said you, have, you all had to stay hidden and the thing. I mean, how we already exposed all our identities, so what's keeping you from using your powers in the open? Christine already did when she uh, teleported them to safety. You know, he actually got a point, replied Justin. I'm going to use uh, my powers to get to the building. Uh, so, Chief, you said you and your uh, helicopter are going to land at the abandoned Wilcox building, correct? Uh, as Bruce. Yeah, that's correct, you fly. We'll be there in the next five minutes, my Bruce. The three soared out of the woods at ultra speed, cutting through everyone in their path. They eventually made it to the Wilcox building inside, along with everyone else. They started to keep you all waiting, but we're finally here, said Justin. Where'd you all uh, get up here this fast, X-Ray Air? And why did you leave us uh, hanging? Leave you hanging? Three, you three ran off without saying anything, replied Ed. That's not important now, said I. We need to find a way to get out of here before they eventually find us. God knows what they'll do to us if they find us. Hey, when did Nathaniel uh, tell you when they'll be arriving? asked Bruce. He told us in the next 15 to 20 minutes, replied Ike. But until that happens, we need to board this place up before they catch us. Alright, I got this, explained uh, Christina. She used her powers to cast an invisible force field on all the exits to the highest floor. Why didn't you do that sooner? asked Ed. Idiot, I was waiting for these uh, guys to show up and sharp replied Christine. You know, sometimes it's best to be quiet if you don't know what's going on. So, we're supposed to sit here till Nathaniel gets. Uh, here with the helicopter to take us to safety, right? Uh, Justin. Later that day, the 15 to 20 minutes they mentioned turned into the rest of the day, which turned to, turned out to be 7 p.m. While they waited, they rested and asked each other what happened to them while the townspeople were chasing them. Bruce told them their sign Ike as Ike, vice versa. This is definitely the act of gradual brainwashing, said Ike. Because there's no way in the world how anyone could just change sizes like that. One day, and of course the next day, they have to destroy us. I don't think people will need to be brainwashed in order to change sizes and instantly find Justin. People can just do that fine, just fine on their own. But in this case, you might be right. Honestly, I've been thinking it over, and it's gotten to this point where I started to wonder if JSA is even worth going through this. You're not thinking about leaving, leaving us, are you? replied Christy. If you do, Wherever you go uh, after you decide to quit. Um, regardless, if you quit or not, these people will still lump you in with the rest of us as rebels. Dude, we joined because we all thought this was a good idea, said Ed. Now you're trying to play the dance on the stress when things are getting, uh, starting to get hard. Uh, that has to be the most selfish thing I've ever heard all weekend. Weekend? replied Justin. Yeah. Next to Raven changed the channel for me watching the biggest game of the century to her weekday afternoon soap operas that she'd already seen at least four times, four or five times already. Dang, that's low, added Aaron. I don't need your two cents, uh, Raven said Ed. You know, getting well, that was selfish. One the matter is, now's not the time to be thinking about uh, quitting, especially when we still have Kali to deal with and his day rebirth. We're starting thing together and that's how we'll finish it. You're right. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. Uh, replied Justin. About a few hours later, the thing finally came to the team with the helicopter. Hello there. Sorry uh, for the wait, said Nathaniel. There were actually many other members that were in some serious, and I mean serious trouble compared to you guys. Hey, can you pick this up first? Jeez, replied Raven. Well, better late than never. Thanks for the help. So where are you, we going anyway? <laughs> have you ever have you uh, ever watched one of those sci-fi movies about underground bunkers out in the woods and whatnot? As you fail, sort of. Is that where we're heading? As Raven, precisely. Mind the nail. The only thing is, this underground bunker isn't in a forest. 
but in a heavily guarded remote grassy plain 250 miles away from civilization just in case a situation like this pops up. Well, I guess that's why they call you guys top secret addict Bruce. For hours they flew in the helicopter reaching their destination as the sky grew lighter and lighter. Finally they reached the underground bunker at the brink of dawn. Here we are, your new home for the rest of the year, explained Nathaniel. It seems this point, this point of respect is a little like an ordinary manhole cover that you see on the sidewalk and still. Nathaniel lifted up the cover and led the group down a long ladder underground. When they all climbed down the ladder, uh, there was a big mechanical entrance standing before them. Nathaniel entered their password. And the entrance lifted up, revealing a gigantic underground base full of bright lights, extremely long hallways that stretched for miles ahead and underneath the group. Uh, aha, as long as you think, is it? stated the fail. As I said earlier, this is where we'll be spending the rest of the year. Pretty cool, huh? That's, this is amazing, uh, explained Ed. I thought this was a uh, make believe, uh, like in the sci fi movies, but they actually do exist. That's not all. Let me show you how to your sweet supply. Uh, tell you, oh, and who can forget the Master Training Center right under our noses? The Commissioner briefly gave uh, a quick tour uh, around the massive underground labyrinth as he showed uh, them their five-star rooms and whatnot. While they were uh, looking at how awesome their suites were, Bruce, Justin, and Aaron heard voices in the background. BJ, Justin, Aaron, their, play, their parents shouted to get their attention. The three brothers immediately embraced their parents, both sides telling how worried they were and how they were glad that they, that each of the other were safe. Man, are they trying to get me jealous or something, said Ed. That's the moment I would kill to have with my parents. Huh? What are you talking about? asked Raven. Well, um, it's kind of a long story, by night. But what he means is that he wishes that he could bond with his folks the way those guys could bond with theirs. Oh, so that's what you're talking about, my Raven. Well, for what is worth, you have us, if that's enough for you. Yeah, I know, I know, we're fine to have. You three are awesome as is, and that's for close accounts than you guys. Oh, did I see tears a moment ago with, uh, Ed? Great jokes, Christine. No, 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 dude. Uh, we're underground. There's, there's dust freaking everywhere, uh, man. Uh, sharply replies that attention, explained the agent. Starting tomorrow, our training to face our enemy starts. But tonight, you all should rest easy for the next day. Oh, did you hear that? We've got this entire day to rest, they suggested. After everyone catches up, they all head to their separate ways to prepare for tomorrow. Meanwhile, in a European castle lies the Lord's uh, brand new hideout. Holly and his associates were all gathered at the grand table eating the finest food money can buy. Uh, hey, Kali, I gotta say, that was a great plan to use Anthos' powers to mesmerize the masses into falling dust at once. It was nothing, replied Kali. I have, I really have my dear Nethus to thank for that. You're too kind, sir, gently replied. Um, Nethus, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. I'm aboard my children, as well as myself, are able to enjoy life as we take the world for our own, replied Kali, and it's all thanks to you. At that moment, Kali's walkie-talkie goes off. Oh boy, do you read me? Uh, says the walkie-talkie. Come in, Klaus, what is it? Uh, asked Kali. We have an intruder, and he seems to be made out of machinery, replied Klaus. You might want to take care of him. You want me to take care of him? If, there is, if this were an ordinary human, then yes, But you said he's a machine. Bring him here to me at once. Yes, sir, Klaus replies. So, boss, what's our next step? asked Neverstudo. We already got our key to the castle. What do we do now? The same thing I stated earlier, replied Kali. After we retrieve the sundown, as well as the four crystals, we can use this power to influence the masters. All that's left is to wait till the, uh, for the day of rebirth to run its course. Then our goal as the supreme rulers will become reality. So, Kali. When you become this master of the, of the world type thing, you're still gonna remember us, right? Asked Flint. Because, you know, when people reach that high status life, they seem to forget who and where they come from. Uh, of course I will, replied Kali. Had not been for you faithful followers, none of this would have been possible. Right at that moment, the door opens and a 
completely revamped stoic version of Klaus appears with the intruder being grabbed by the collar in Klaus's hand. Hello Klaus, glad to see you made it, I call you. Is that the intruder you have by the collar? Yeah, this guy was nothing but fire Klaus. The strange thing is that this guy's a machine yet he looks kinda like you. This gotta be some sort of trick. Holly then gets up from the table and walks toward the mysterious look like. Tell me, who are you? asked Holly. This man already confirmed you to be a robot, so tell me, who is your creator and leader? I refuse to talk, replies the mechanical intruder. Hey boss, mind if I put a few dents in this bucket of bolts added plant? Quiet plant, explained Holly. This is no time for your useless talk. So it seems you made it your prerogative not to talk no matter what. Well, I guess this is, uh, has to take something more. What are you planning to do with them? asked the Queen Mathis. You're not trying to destroy it, are you? Of course not, said Kali. I'm just going to do a little reprogramming is all. I'm simply shutting him off, then removing his motherboard and replacing it with one of my own. So he can act as a spy for whoever sent him to us and become one of our very own puppets. Besides, it's not every day we get a high-tech android to work for us. So why not celebrate the moment? In the meantime, Nathus, hold on to his original motherboard so we can mass-produce the pseudo-drones for our grand-scale invasion on JSA. Understood, replied Nathus. If you ask me, the invasion's not coming fast enough, explained Klaus. Uh, I'll make those brats pay for what they did to me in the well. You really want to test your final form on them, don't you? Replied Kali. Just remember not to overdo it. As much as, as, that, as much as that body of yours is indeed brand new and powerful, it still can become weak and powerless if overused. Perhaps permanently, it completely overshadows the drain. Yeah, thanks to the Black House. You just told me the same thing a little while ago. So, uh, now that that's said and done, what do we uh, do with this pile of junk lay lying on the floor? Asked Glenn. Simple, my colleague. I'm going to reactivate it, type in the coordinates, and send it back wherever it came. And if it's master questions why it's come back unsuccessful, I give it a message saying that it is a full scale ambush and had no choice but to retreat. You know, it's slightly disturbing how you managed to come up with all these in just a few seconds. Added another studio in the room. Hey, what else can I say, replies Kali, which only leaves me one more thing to ask of you, Nathis. Next day, the team trained as the others in the, uh, in the simulated training area. I continue to work on his weapons. He states he, he's tired of being in the background and wants to get involved for once. They all seem tremendous improvements uh, from the last uh, time they trained with them, but at the same time, they all wonder where Flint went since they noticed he went MIA for a long time while they were discussing his disappearance. A red alert went off stating there is a strange intruder on the premises. Uh, the place began to rumble and noise felt that it was coming from the surface. Both roots get to the surface to find out what's going on. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Uh, radio goes off. This thing's freaking huge. What the heck is this thing? We need backup. Do you need me? Do you read me? We need backup. Help. The team immediately rushes to the top while Ike tells them that he's working on his toy ray gun and tells them that he'll be with them shortly. When they arrive to the surface, they find a giant wasp-like robot attacking the soldiers. What the? What the heck is that? Uh, Christine exclaimed, Ayane Kage and Dante charged at the colossal side monster as Matthew stays out of range to constantly shoot at it. Their attack proved useless as it released a, a protective orb around itself and cast their damaging slicing sound waves into the atmosphere. Everyone was paralyzed from the velocity of the sound waves. Ah, I can't hear! My ears are bleeding, exclaimed Jester. The others threw elemental attacks at the monster and it immediately uh, deflected the attacks. It's like this thing knows our every move, explained INA. The black drone then released a very large sound blast that left everyone immobile. This can't be, explained Dante. 
as the monster charges up for an atomic sound wave, Matthew shoots at it. Effective works as the gun blasts the uh, leaves scatter parts over the area. However, the drone immediately reeled itself back up and then struck at Matthew, with, which left him unconscious. As all hope steam off, I can hear the toy ray guns that repeatedly shot clean through the um drawn to its motherboard. While it was charging up again for the atomic sound wave. Uh, as Ike shot at the core of his motherboard, the drone immediately began to shut down. The whole thing began, leave, began to fade into black and turn to a small crystal shard, which Ike picks up and vanish into his hand. Dude, you just went and saved ourselves. Thanks, rejoiced Ed. I really didn't do anything, replied Ike. You guys did most of the work. At that moment, Tanner ran, to ran towards the scene, asking if everyone was all right. He also states that he was in using the restroom when the alert went off, and ran up here as soon as he finished. Everyone replied that he gave them too much info. <laughs> Meanwhile, the thing called Tanner managed to aid the injured, and, the and told the team that they could resume their training uh, when they finished recovering. While Justin was uh. Being taken by the cameras along with the others, he noticed that Ike grabbed a shark that looked similar to the one he had a while back. Later that day, Ike's body began to change back to the time more than the day before. Uh, three days later, they all finished recovery and were ready to train again. When they all uh, got to the training of facility, they noticed um, Sam watching Ike work on his sound manipulation ability. Hey Ike, so this means you have suit powers after all, said Matthew. Yeah, I know, replied Ike. It looks like I have the same powers that the drone had. This is amazing, exclaimed Nathaniel. He actually inherited the powers of the black drone and made it. He made them his own. Hey, watch this. In the tr uh, in the training stood dozens of glass cups, and windows, and mirrors, and other things. With just a snap of his fingers, he sent a visible sound wave towards the glass object, which all broke in an instant. Dude, awesome, exclaimed uh, Jester. Now, we've got another party member to add to the team. Did you just use a video game reference? Asked Christy. I sure did, replied Justin. So from this point on, I will not be fighting with you all on missions, uh, said Nathaniel. So, you think you're going to stand a chance against Colleen and David Burke? Asked Matthew. I don't think. I know. Uh, replied I. From that point on, Ike joined the group in offensive combat and was actually more skilled than some of them already, even as they started using his abilities. Um, weeks later, after uh, training was complete, Joe, I mean, JSA celebrated with an after party one following night. Everyone got together and enjoyed gourmet food, ice cold drinks, and HD movies in the mess hall. Okay, this has been uh, the 11th chapter titled The Eggs Out. The next chapter will be titled The Preparation. And like always, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe for more. Uh, this is Wardman McDonald. Thank you for listening.